So what are the ways that we know that the Lord loves us and it is the desire of the Lord to see us truly come into the conformity of truly being sons of God is how he does not allow us to stay the same. That's a blessing for you and I. And that is something that we should be, we should Rejoice in, in the fact that the Lord loves us so much that the Spirit of God is constantly taking us through change and strengthening and developing our hearts and sanctifying us of the, the evil and the bad aspects of our character and tr continuing to transform and renew our minds as we strive to obey him and please him in our daily lives. The Lord wants us to know that. The Lord wants us to, to, to be encouraged in that, that that's one of the ways that we know that he loves us, that he does not allow us to stay the same. He does not allow you to stay in the world. The fact that he places a desire in you to seek him every day, a desire in you to know his will, Desire, it places a desire in you to want to fulfill the, the, the purposes that he has for your life. That is how you know God loves you. Now, it could, it could become trying and it could become challenging when the change that he's making us undergo goes against our, our nature, when it goes against our our way, our way of doing things. And the word of God says that there is a way that seems right to a man. And the end of that way, the end of the, those ways are death. So the Lord wants to take us out of that way, that course of death that we are on our way on. The, the, how we are so driven and so driven by our own passions and our own pursuits. And the Lord wants to take us out of that. And he wants to give us purpose. He wants to give us identity and give us purpose because man is on a course to do what feels good to him. Man is on a course to fulfill what his mind can, can rationalize and justify, but the Lord wants to justify us by faith. So as we believe in him, we believe that the father brought Jesus into the world to reconcile man back to him and Jesus became the repayment for man because outside of Jesus you are a sinner and the Lord considers you dead and you are dead in those trespasses and sins that is your lifestyle that is the life that you are living in no matter how much you try to be a good person how much I no matter how nice you think you are no matter how responsible or or, or smart or gratuitous that you think you are the Lord classifies you as dead in trespasses and sins the Lord quickens you but he can quicken you and make you alive by his spirit because that which is born of the flesh is flesh but that which is born of the spirit is spirit and we have to be born again of the water and of the spirit so that the spirit of God can truly perform the work in us that he's desiring to do the apostle Paul, as he's admonishing the Philippi church and he's telling them that he seeks the Lord for them, for their strength and for their going forward. He says he, as he does that in joy, he says that he wants them to be confident in the very thing that he, that, that he which has begun that great and that good work in them is going to continue to do that work. He's going to continue to do that work until the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. And that's something for us to be confident about, confident about the fact that when we consistently do the things that Jesus has laid out for us to do, as he reveals us and to us what that is, he instructs us, directs us, and leads us in our daily lives, confidence helps us to believe that doing what Jesus says is going to benefit us because whatever benefits him benefits us. So as he's beginning that, as he's begun that great work or that good work in us, 
he's going to continue to do that work as he is making, as he is preparing for his return. And we should be confident in that. And confidence in the Lord looks like, again, consistently doing the things that he's called us to do. So we know that we love God and we know that we are striving to take on the nature and the, the, the personality and the likeness of Jesus when we consistently do the things that we are supposed to do as he gives us the grace and power to do so. So the spirit of God enables us, gives us the power as we believe, we receive the power to become sons of God. And in that sonship, we strive to do the, the will of God in every circumstance, in every relationship, with every resource, with every responsibility. You are striving, you and I are striving to fulfill the will of God. So the Lord wants us to, there is, there is a, there's this matter of courage. It's this matter of courage. So we talked about confidence and we talked about consistency. So I know that confidence is a becoming a part of who I am when I can consistently do the things that I'm called to do. And courage also helps me in my consistency. Courage describes the boldness to do the things that we feel that the Lord has revealed to us that we should do. Courage, courage is, describes the fact that the, the passion and zeal to please God and, and, and no matter what it takes, no matter what it looks like, no matter where it places us in life, no matter what we have to relinquish, no matter what... Um, no matter what we have to, to forfeit, no matter what, how, how, how low we have to get, you know, because the Bible says that the, the meek shall inherit the earth. Jesus said, take on my yoke and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly of heart, and you will find rest for your souls. So Jesus wants he desires us to come close to him. He desires us to, to walk with him in such a way that the relationship that we have with Jesus is one that he feels comfortable with us being close to him. And he feels comfortable with sharing himself with us. So when we leave our fellowship with him, we can go out and represent him in the earth as we are called to. But there is a there is a, a courage that it takes to believe that what we get from God is valuable enough to where we're going to hold on to it. We're going to keep it and we're going to use it. We're going to utilize what Jesus gives us, because it's true that th things such as fear, fear can tell us that what God has given us is not going to have the impact that we think is going to have. Fear says that. I, I stand only to lose when I begin to put forth effort to obey God. We have pride that works in man's heart and mind that says that I don't have to put forth the effort. I don't have to obey at the required level because God is going to be good to me anyway because his grace is sufficient. And as long as I have his grace, then that will suffice. It, his grace is enough to, to wake me up and to keep curses out of my life and to keep me from falling into deep sin and, and, and so deep to where I can't get out of it. So the Lord, as we continue to let him do that work, that good work that he's doing in us, we, ha we have to believe and we have to trust and we have to, that we have to seek him with a level of confidence and courage that says that I know that Jesus is doing a perfect work in me. And because he's doing a perfect work in me, and perfection means that me and him, me and Jesus have a relationship where we are one. Me and Jesus have a relationship where I can reflect his nature. I can reflect his character. I can reflect his conduct. Knowing that and knowing that us being one with Jesus as he is one with the Father, that pleases God when we are like Jesus. And 
we, we are to be confident in that. And, and, and as we are courageous in that, um, there's a, there's, a, there's a level of strength that is relinquished to us. Courage tells Jesus that we're going to give it all that we have. Our, our, every, every part of our being is completely surrendered to God. Every part of our being is going to engage God. My mind, my heart, my body, my emotions, my soul, my spirit, every, every aspect that makes up who I am as a person is going to be fully engaged to God. And in that, he gives you, in that, that displays courage. You, you are worshiping the invisible God. He said that they that worship me must worship me in spirit and in truth. So as you walk in the spirit so that you don't fulfill the desires of your, of the desires of your flesh, that is you entering into a, a life of courage and confidence and consistency that allows you to receive strength from God and it will strengthen your heart and you will you will continue to have that the hope and the faith and the focus that you need to truly live your life as a son and to truly endure to the end because that's what he wants to do as your faith is being tried know that there are things that you're that, that's going to happen within your faith but as you overcome these things because Jesus said that he did not he said that in the world, in the world, you're going to have tribulation. But in me, you're going to have peace. He said, in me, you're going to have peace. Why? Because he overcame the world. And Jesus is also developing you and enabling you as you obey to receive more strength and to receive more of him so that you can truly Overcome your world. Overcome the, 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 the aspects of who you are that separates you from Jesus. Overcoming the, the aspects of unbelief that separates you from God, that separates you from his work, that separates you from the people who are designed to bring the things out of you that have been placed in you. There's a war that's going on where man not only has to fight with the nature and that he has to sin, but he also has to fight with the fact that his environment, because people are living lives of sin and people don't desire to turn from their sin. People don't want to repent and be converted and be transformed by the spirit of God. So people are continuing to walk and live lives that are absent of the fear of God and they don't come to the house of God so that they can be held accountable in their daily lives, so they can be held accountable with who they are and how they live. They don't want their lives to be scrutinized. So man, as he wants to obey God, he has his heart that wants to go against that. But Jesus, the word of God says that if your heart condemns you and makes you feel that you can't go forward, Jesus, the spirit of God is greater than your heart. David said in the Psalms, in Psalms 51, he approached the Lord and he said, have mercy on me, O Lord, according to your loving kindness. And later on in the Latin, the, the, another part of that chapter, he begins to tell the Lord what he wants him to do. He begins to tell the Lord, this is what I'm going to need in order to be what you want me to be. He says, creating me as he asks, and then he also asks the Lord to, to forgive, for cleanse him of his sins and his transgressions. And David would just pour his heart out to God. But he, he, he in, in uh, Psalm 51, he says, Lord, he said, oh Lord, create in me a clean heart and renew a right spirit in me. So he's talking about, Lord, deal with this, this inward part of myself that wants to fight with you wants to fight with you for dominion, wants to fight with you for position, wants to fight with man to survive, wants to fight with man to, to maintain safety and maintain life. You know, man doesn't realize that when you are out of the will of God, you, you begin to fight with God. You begin to fight with everything that God has placed in your life, even the things that are meant to benefit you, the people, the places, the things, everything becomes 
an enemy. Everything becomes an obstruction. Everything becomes an obstacle, something you have to get over, something you have to fight with. I remember earlier in, on in my life, living a, when I was in sin, you know, everything was something to get over on. A person was something to get over on. A woman was someone to outsmart so that I could get pleasure from her, although I did not want a relationship with her. This person was somebody to get over on, or I would strategically maneuver my way through relationships so that I would have stood not to lose anything. And the things that I did lose, I didn't care if I lost them anyway. And that's that's fear. Fear is man saying, Lord, I don't want you to be in control. I don't want to truly give you my life because I don't feel confident in giving you my life. I feel confident in having the control and the ability to make my own decisions, to dictate my own, I make decisions to see, to main, to have a certain type of outcome. And I'll only make certain decisions when I feel like either the outcome is going to work in my favor. And if it doesn't work in my favor, I feel like I still, in the end, if I lose things, I still don't lose who I am. I still maintain control. And that's why man has to be born again, because without Jesus, man is fully set on course to hell. It doesn't matter. You can read this Bible. You can read this word. You can comb through it. You can read about Jesus. You can be impressed with all of the miraculous things he did. You can read these things and nod your head and agree with it. But if Jesus is not living in you on the inside, if the spirit of God is not filling you and transforming you, and you are not consistently seeking the face of God, you are not going to have the ability to obey God. You're not going to have the ability to walk according to the purpose and the plan for your life. And that's not the will of God for anybody. But unfortunately, many are going to, many are going to continue to forfeit heaven because they want pleasure or because they want control. But earlier on in my life, I used to live this way concerning my relationships and my decisions. And as I gave my life to Jesus and he began to transform me by his spirit, he began to fill my mind and the word of God began to point me to God. The word of God began to confront the, the fallen nature, began to break through my heart and heart. And the Lord began to truly break up the fallow ground. As the Lord began to do that, that good work that we've been talking about, instead of seeing my world as something to fight with and my world as something to try to get it to serve me, I realized like, wait a minute, I'm supposed to serve my world. Now I look at relationships and, and the Lord will make help you to look at relationships as blessings, things as look at this world as his. And because you see this world as his, you begin to seek him of how you are meant to operate in this world and how you can bless him with what he's blessed you with within the world that he's placed you in. So the, the, the take home from this that I would like you to, to consider is that we all need to be confident in the good work that the Lord is doing. Now, if the Lord is not doing a good work, that's because you are not born again and because you, in some way, shape, or form, are keeping aspects of yourself from Jesus. And when we keep aspects of our hearts from Jesus, when our minds are unavailable for the work of God and we're not keeping our minds on him, then there's peace that we lose, lose out on. There's joy, the peace, the joy, and the righteousness that comes by the Holy Ghost. That's something that can't get to us. That's something that cannot fill us. But it is the desire of the Lord that Jesus Christ be your God and you be his, 
if you be his son. Because those that are led of the Spirit of God, those are the sons of God. So may the Spirit of God lead you as you pursue him and as you strive to obey him. 